welcome everyone. It's good to see all who are with us. We welcome you here to Bayou Baptist Church, and we come together to worship the Lord, our Savior, in spirit and in truth. If you have cell phones or whatever, please at this time put them on vibrate or mute. And if you have to answer, go outside the building and answer. That way you can talk freely without us hearing you in here. That way a conversation between you and that person, so I understand as well. So we do welcome you and, and hope that today you will come, as we come into the house of Lord, we come together to worship and to praise our Lord and our Savior. Let's all stand as Al comes and leads us in our call to worship and opening prayer. Do wonder they love divine, all love excel. <laughs> Father, if we will surrender our thoughts 
as we hear your word preach, as you hear your word talk. Father, we will be attentive. Our hope, our whole mind, paying attention to your word. Take charge of this service, Father. Be with those who could be with us this morning, whatever the reason it might be. Bless them that know that they are in our prayers on our hearts. Take charge, Father. Lead us, guide us, and direct us. And I turn your precious name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Steve.
time of prayer and prayer request, if you're back and you'll pull it in there, we're going to be praying, requests, concerns. I ask you to remember every one of these, and even the many that we do not have written down, remember them in prayer. The many in nursing homes and hospitals, the many that are dealing with different physical problems and ailments, lift them up. And the many who are struggling, going through difficulties, maybe at work or at home, and even even the battles that we face from day to day, uh, maybe the battle within ourselves. You know, you you know, we often say, you know, I got that good angel and that bad angel, and I'm holding sides on me, and you know, man with whispers in my ears, go ahead, do it, do it, do it. The woman says, no, don't do it, don't do it. You know, we all battle that. Don't think we don't. Every one of us, and we need prayer every day. So pray for each other and remember each other in prayer during the course of the week. Sometimes we we come into things that we don't even expect that would happen this evening, tomorrow, Tuesday, Wednesday, whatever. You know, and we need prayer. I need prayer, you need prayer, we all need prayer. And we need help from God. And He's the only one that can help us as we struggle in this world. As we look around and we see just how bad sometimes it is. And the only one that can help us is Jehovah God. And that comes by life upon his power. So pray for each other, remember each other in prayer. Many prayers of Thanksgiving. Uh, again, uh, on our list, remember the many people who are dealing with cancer and cancer-related issues, Alex and Mark, Linda and Ray, Chris, Luke, you know, and maybe I missed somebody else, but just remember these people in prayer and they're dealing with some of them more terminal, some of them more treatable. Remember these people in prayer and what they're dealing with. All the prayer requests, concerns, Whatever you would like to share with us, Thanksgiving, whatever. Um, and we may either rejoice with you or pray with you as well. Any? Renee? Okay. All right, so remember, remember Danny and, and, Steve, and Stephen Jr. Um, both have upper respiratory problems, sinuses, and everything. And, uh, so it's playing in upon both of them, so we want to remember them in prayer. <coughs> Thank you for that. Yeah, traveling mercies not only for them, but for all who will be traveling, because that, 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 the next weekend will be more of a weekend, of course. It's, it's going to be Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. You know, it's always a hectic time to travel. So, traveling mercies for y'all, when y'all travel, you know, heading to what, Tennessee? Yes. Okay. Family reunion. Okay, so here we are. We should be. Other prayer requests. Just to be for every one of my sisters. Sure. My husband and I, my children. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All the very questions. Danny? Yeah, I'd like to pray for my uh, son. And, okay. Uh, his girlfriend. They're having a baby. He's supposed to be yesterday, but she's still waiting. Oh, okay. Let me make sure everything's safe. Sure. Okay. Remember them in prayer. We sure will. Sure. Uh, Danny. Now, Melton, a post jumped out in front of him at work when he was stopped. <laughs> <laughs> and he said, he hit the steering wheel. Okay. Yeah. He bruised up a lot. Yeah, he, he bruised up his upper parcel there. Um, he, he talk, and I talked with him at the beginning of the week, and he said, for whatever reason, he don't know why, but he and we just came out and got him. And it didn't do much damage to the car he was driving at work, but it didn't do damage to him. And he said he didn't remember half of it. So, so remember him to pray. And also you as well, you got, you're still dealing with a neck muscle spasm uh, as well. So I want to remember you also in prayer. So remember both of you in prayer as well as physical problems happen. So we sure will. Yes. Others? Yes, as always, give thanks to Lord for all that given to us and, uh, and uh, we come God's greatest life faithfulness. Regardless of how we may feel from day to day, God is still faithful. He's still there with us. People may say God is not around. He's around. He's still with us. Yeah. I would like to remember my cousin Lou. Yeah. She was diagnosed with a brain disease about five years ago. 
cost is to go to the state so to know that our, our husband and our husband's there for all this time. Okay. All right. Remember, remember both of them in prayer as well as the family in prayer. Sure. Others. Dolores. That's right, Alice. We have a knee surgery on Thursday, right? The 30th. Yes, this, this coming Thursday, she'll have knee surgery. Alice is a good friend of theirs who lives in New Orleans, and so she's having knee surgery. Uh, that's going to be done, so remember her. Any others? Again, just pray for each other, remember each other in prayer. Pray for those who are not here with us this morning, for whatever reason it may be. We do have a few people that are out, some, as we mentioned, are sick. Others maybe had to work, and others just had no reason not to be here or any place. Pray for them and lift them up in prayer. And, and again, just remember all the senior adults, as well as all the young people in the world today. You know, mentioned in Sunday school this morning that we talked about, you know, it's extremely hard today for young people growing up. And, you know, and it's, you, have a, you have a whole lot that you are being bombarded with in life and some things are taught and are good and some things are not. And so pray for the young people. Pray for guidance, for leadership, and for help in their lives. And pray for the parents of young people as they deal with different things that come up. And so pray for families and pray for each other. All the men and women in the military and their families, remember them in prayer. And again, the many on our prayer list is continue to pray for them and remember them also. Let's go, Lord. Almighty God, we come before you. Great Jehovah, we lift up all these prayers before your throne. And we come before you in the name of Jesus, the one who died on the cross for our sins, the one who gives us strength, grace, and hope, the one to whom those of us here today who do believe in him lives in our hearts and our lives. And so we pray for your guidance, for your help. We pray for healing upon those who are dealing with physical problems. And if not healing, we pray for your grace and your mercy upon each and every one and for help. We pray for help where we struggle in different areas in our life. We pray for those areas, Lord, that we're battling. Help us and be with us. Again, for the many, many prayer requests that have been spoken here this morning, as well as in the Sunday School hour, all of the unspoken prayers. We lift them all up before you and pray for your will to be done in everything. Traveling mercies for those who are traveling and for those who will be traveling. As we come up this week and next weekend will be Memorial Weekend, we pray for traveling mercies for all who will be traveling and are traveling. We pray for all the nursing homes, hospitals, and even in their own homes, all the senior adults, what they go through, the young people, and what they deal with from day to day, and the parents as well. We pray for students, teachers, and all that fall with that. Again, all the men and women in the military and their families. We pray. And Lord, we thank you. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your care. We thank you for being with us. Lord, we pray for the lost. Those who do not know Jesus Christ personally, the Lord is Savior. We lift them up and we pray for salvation. Be with us this morning. Lead us and guide us by the power of your Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus, we ask it. Amen. Let us continue then as our the leaders in our offertory gift. Standing. Standing. Turning to him number. 535, now we'll sing the wondrous story. Yeah. 
all of your provisions. Thank you for giving unto us things needed in our lives. And Lord, we come now and give you back a portion of what you have blessed us with. We ask, Lord, that you'll see to it that all that is collected is used for the furtherance of your kingdom, for the spreading of the gospel, that others may come to know you as Lord and Savior. And Lord, may you bless both the gift and the giver. In the name of Jesus. Amen.
chapter 11 and verse 7. First, let me read as a way of introduction as well of Noah, thinking today and looking at basically fathers and how to be a successful father or a successful person in this life. And first, let me read the account of what took place in Genesis chapter 6. You can either listen or turn, uh, turn to Genesis chapter 6, verses 5 through 22, and this is what took place a few thousand years ago. This is an actual story that actually took place. The Lord saw how great man's wickedness on the earth had become, and that every inclination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil all the time. This grieved the Lord. This grieved him that he had made man on the earth, and the earth was filled with pain. So the Lord said, I will wipe mankind, whom I created from the face of the earth, men and animals and creatures that move along the ground and birds of the air, for I am grieved that I have made them. But Noah found favor in the eyes of the Lord. This is the account of Noah. Noah was a righteous man, blameless among the people of his time. He walked with God. Noah had three sons, Shem, Ham, and Jephthah. Now the earth was corrupt in God's sight, and full of violence. God saw how corrupt the earth had become, and for all the people on the earth, and the corrupt their ways. So God said to Noah, I'm going to put an end to all people, for the earth is filled with violence because of them. I am surely going to destroy both them and the earth. So make yourself an ark of cypress wood. Make rooms in it, and coat it with pitch inside and out. And this is how you would build it. The ark is to be 450 feet long, 75 feet wide, and 45 feet high. Make a roof for it and finish it. The ark within 18 inches of the top. Put a door on the side of the ark and make lower, middle, and upper decks. I'm going to bring flood waters on the earth to destroy all life under the heavens. Every creature that has breath of life in it, everything on earth will perish. But I will establish my covenant with you, and you will enter the ark, you and your sons and your wives and your sons' wives with you. And you are to bring into the ark two of all living creatures, male and female, to keep them alive with you. Two of every kind of birds, every kind of animal, and every kind of creature that moves along the ground will come to you to be kept alive. You are to take every kind of food that is to be eaten and store it away for food for you and for them. No one did just as God commanded him. A lot of people don't believe this story. Today in schools, they, they have creationism rather than the creation that comes from the Bible. They believe in Darwin's theory of evolution. You know, they believe that we actually were fish at one time, and then we came out of there, and then all of a sudden we walked upon these and evolved into what we are now. Such a heresy. Such a sin as it's being promoted in the schools today. I've often said, if this was the case, why isn't it still happening? Why isn't it still taking place? I've yet to catch a fish and have it talk back to me. I've yet to see even a fish walk upon the ground like a man. I'm sorry. It's too hard for me to comprehend when it's just not there. And here God created everything. You know, raising a family is a tough task sometimes. All sorts of things come up. And you know something? There are lots of things they don't even teach you in Family Course 101. Lots of things. No matter how many books you read, no matter how many things you do on how to be a good parent, how to raise your ch children, they just don't get any of the things that take place and happen. Noah lived in time doing, there was very wickedness. Evil was everywhere. I mean everywhere. People didn't worship, didn't honor Jehovah God. They could care less about what God was. They did what they wanted to do. They did whatever they thought was, they wanted to do. Today, we look around, and what do you see? Almost the same thing. Evil and violence, seen and heard, throughout our land, everywhere. 
people, families, with men, women, children. They're doing things that are never even heard of before. Evil all around. And you know something? This grieves God. He looks down and he says, wow. Look how far people have gotten away. Look what is taking place. Just as he did in the days of Noah, he said he grieved God. Many people think God doesn't hurt. God has humans. It's a God said, I'm grieved that men are doing this. This is not why I created you. He did not create men, women, boys and girls to do evil. He did not create them to go out and shoot in the middle of a crowd. He did not go out so that they could steal from other people, to take someone else's life, to do wrong, to live lives ungodly. Sad. So how did Noah succeed as a father? In such a time where everything was evil. At least today you, we get glimpses of some good going on. And something's happening. Back then it said that everything, even their thinking, was evil. Everything. So how do parents, <coughs> mom, dad, sometimes mom plays the part of the role of the dad, and sometimes dad plays the role of the parent, mom, or whatever the case may be. How do you succeed in difficult times? How do we do it? As a believer, how do we do it? You know something? It's not easy. It's hard. It's difficult. I'm not going to make any bones about it. I, myself, from my own experience, can tell you, it's not easy raising children. And children really don't know how hard it is until they have their own children. Just how hard it is. Just the difficulties they will face from day to day. The anxieties, the worries, the fears, and the many other things. And here, Noah, being a, a very, very my, minority person for being one of only eight that worship the Lord. Eight out of all the people that live on the face of the earth. Wow. How do you do it? In Hebrews chapter 11, he is part of the faith people, the Paul of faith, as we call it. Notice in, in Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 7. First of all, notice what it says there. It says, by faith, Noah was warned about things not yet seen. The first thing Noah did was he listened to the words of God. That's the very first thing, listening to the words of God. See, God spoke to Noah and told him about things that would happen that he had not seen. He related to Noah what he was about to do, what he was going to do. And what did Noah do? He listened. He listened to the things of God. Noah didn't turn a deaf ear to the words of God. Noah walked with God, it said in Genesis. Noah worshipped God. He believed the things of God. Noah did not think that what God told him was insane or even ridiculous. He didn't laugh at God as others do today. He took God seriously. And he knew that who was speaking to him was indeed Jehovah God. He knew this. And this again, this is the same God who created the heavens and the earth and all of us as well. If you notice, the Lord says, It grieved me that he had made man on the earth and the heart was filled with pain. It grieved God that whom he had created from the dust of the ground, breathe into his nostril breath, that the same person turn their backs on God. Does it not grieve God today? Absolutely. God hurts when he sees his people doing the things that they do. And regardless of how people's face are today, all creation belongs to God. All people. He said, we'll stand before you. Everyone, whether they're saved or not, God created them. And so we see here that God spoke to Noah, and Noah listened to the things of God. Today, God still 
speaks. And God has spoken. But do people listen to that? Do they listen to the things of God? Do they have ears that they indeed can hear? Absolutely. But have they done what Jesus said would happen? Is this happening today? As Jesus spoke about the things of the kingdom of heaven, in Matthew chapter 13, he says, The knowledge of the kingdom of heaven has been given to you, but not to them. Whoever has will be given more, and, and he will have more abundance. Whoever does not, even that will be taken from him. This is why I speak in parables. Those seeing, they do not see. Those hearing, they do not hear or understand. In them is the fulfillment of the prophecy from Isaiah. <clears throat> You will be ever hearing, but never understanding. You will be ever seeing, but never perceiving. Why? The people's hearts have become callous. They hardly hear with their ears, and they have closed their eyes. Otherwise, they might see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and understand with their hearts, and turn, and I will heal them. Heal them. Noah spoke the words of God to the people of his time. This is recorded for us in 2 Peter. Have people today, like in the days of Noah, have they turned from the truth? Have they turned a deaf ear to God and no longer listening to the things of God? Or are people hearing only the things that they want to hear? You know, sometimes we, you know, we as parents, we know sometimes our kids, and we tell our kids certain things. And we think they're listening to us. But yet, they don't listen unless it's something they really want to hear sometimes. We all experience that. Even when we were kids. Remember how our parents used to talk to us? And we really didn't hear them unless it was something we really wanted to hear. And then all of a sudden, like, oh yeah, I heard that. Well, you didn't hear the other stuff up. No. Because we only hear what we wanted to hear. And, and here... We see Noah spoke the words of God to the people, but they refused to hear the things. He just didn't go about building the ark and not relate to the people what was going on. I'm sure they were all curious when he was building this ark. And so in 2 Peter, it said that he spoke to them, he preached that, and he told them what was going to happen and what was going to take place. But I think also what was happening is what is told to us in 2 Timothy chapter 4, and what the word of God so says. It says, for the time will come when that man will not put up with sound doctrine. Instead, to suit their own desires, they will gather around a great number of teachers to say what their itching ears want to hear. They will turn their ears away from the truth and turn aside to myths. We see it happening more and more today. People are turning more and more to myths. To these things that are not real. Fables. Stories made up by men. These are not real. But yet, they rather believe a lie than a truth. Like back in the days of Noah, I ask you, have people today turned from the truth? Are people truly listening only to what they want to hear? Absolutely. Absolutely. Have people today turned away from the things of God? And are they believing a lot? Satan has deceived the world today, and still is. And we see it happening more and more. Ask yourself, why is there so much evil? Like in the days of Noah, why is there so much evil even today? It's because of sin. Unrepentant sin. Far too many times we make excuses for sin, but there's no excuse. People are just doing what they want to do. Whatever makes them happy, regardless of the consequences of anybody else, it's whatever they want to do that makes them happy. And they sin. And you know what the response is? So what? It doesn't affect me. I'm not suffering from it, but other people do. And the result of it is the reason we have more and more evil is because of the sin, the unrepentant sin, and because of the fact they've gotten away from God. You know, in Romans chapter 1, it still states in here, Romans chapter 1, that the wrath of God is being revealed from heaven against all godlessness and wickedness of men who suppress the truth for their wickedness. See, they deny it. Since they 
since what has been known to them about God is plain because God has made plain to them, for since the creation of the world, God's invisible qualities, his eternal power, and divine nature has clearly seen, being understood what has been made so that men are without excuse. So you see, even when even when men said, Oh, I don't see that written down, they can see it from the universe in which God created. And that's what God wants. And so what happens? Now, because of this, because of what? Sin. Unrepentant sin. God gave them over to the shameful lust. Therefore, God gave them over to the desires of their heart. God, they exchanged the truth of God for a lie. They worshiped and served created things rather than the Creator, who is forever praised. <coughs> this is not going on in our nation today, in our world today. People are serving and worshiping other things. Things made of wood, gold, silver. Things made from the human hand and saying, this is our God. And even though they know, wait a minute, this is not our God. Our God is one who is great and powerful. It's not something that we have to create with our hands and then worship. It's one who always has been and always will be. It's one who created us from absolutely nothing and gave us breath, gave us life sent his son to die and cross for our sins so that we can have eternal life. This is our God. Jehovah God cares about us. He cares about each and every one of you. He cares so much, he says, I will send my son to die for you. And indeed, Jesus came and he died. He didn't die for his sins because he was a sinless being. He died for us so that we could have eternal life. This is how much God cares. God does care. But people rather believe a lie today rather than the truth. Sad how it is. Although they know God's righteous decree and those who do such things deserve death, they not only continue to do these things, but also approve of those who practice them. I see it happening all the time. I'm sure you have too. You read it out in the paper, you look at it on TV. You see it maybe even firsthand. People do these things. Why? Because of sin. Because they have no fear of God. Because they are godless people. Point blank. If they were not, they would not do such things, not only to themselves, but also to other innocent people. That they do. In the days of Noah. When warned about these things, he listened to God, and he did not turn a deaf ear. Listen to the words of God, and listen to what God has to say. Secondly, obey the word of God. Notice also in this, you know, it says in Hebrews chapter 11 and part of verse 7 again, in holy fear built an ark. He obeyed. God told Noah what his task was. Noah obeyed. Noah did not know how he was going to do this work. This huge task that God had before him. You know what he did? He just rolled up his sleeves and he started to build the ark. He built the ark by the way of the master, of the designer who is the master builder. God himself. He gave him what he was to do, how he was to do it. And no one can say, look back and say, wow, this is too much for me to do. Instead, he just rolled up his leaves and he obeyed the word of God. And he started building. It took him 120 years. But he did it. Because God enabled him to do it. Never once did he complain. Never once did he say the task was too much. He just continued on and he built it. He didn't even question God. Because God already told him what was going to happen. He didn't say, Lord, well, wait a minute, Lord. What, what if? What if? What if there was ten righteous people? I think somebody else did that later on. Abraham asked the ten righteous people. Well, Noah, he didn't even ask the ten righteous people. You want to know why? Noah knew it wasn't even ten righteous people in the whole land. He could see just how bad it was. He didn't question God and what God was saying. He knew that what God was saying was right. Even today, as God looks down, we can see what God was saying in the fight. 
land is filled with violence. Noah built an ark knowing that God's warning was to be taken serious. This is what it means when he says, in holy fear, he built an ark. That means he took the word of God seriously. He knew that what God said he was going to do, it was going to happen. There was no ends, ifs, or buts. It was coming. Noah did believe the words of God. And what did he do? He acted upon it. People today hear the word of God. Sadly, many don't act upon it. Many have the attitude, I don't care. I got time. Do you? That's what the people in Noah's day thought. They laughed at him probably, ridiculed him. There's no telling what he did because it's not written to us. What happened? But think about it. Think about it. He built an ark on dry land where there was no water around anywhere. Here he is building this big old huge ark. I think it says something like three foot ball field lengths. Something like that. Or, or longer than that. But it's huge. Bigger than even a superdome. And here it is. He's building this big old huge ark. And I'm sure they questioned him and ridiculed him and laughed at him. And here he was, he and his sons, four of them, three sons and himself, building this huge ark. It wasn't easy for Noah. It wasn't easy for his family. It was hard. And yet, they obeyed the Lord. You know, sometimes it's not easy obeying the things of the Lord. Sometimes it's hard. It's difficult to obey. But they did it when everybody else didn't. They were faithful. You know, one of the hardest things today is obeying the things of God when everyone else is going the other way. When everybody else is doing something else. Again, today, like in the days of Noah, it's not easy. You know what it takes? It takes faith and hard work. Let's not kid ourselves. It takes faith in one true God and hard work obey the things of God. It's not easy. You know, you may lose friends, you may lose family members, and there may be even times when you get discouraged. I get discouraged, and I know you get discouraged. Sometimes it's hard. It's difficult. Sometimes you want to get in the corner and all you want to do is cry. Why? Because you see how people are living. You see how a friend of yours is living. Or maybe a family member. And you want, and you don't want that person to continue on down, down, down that road. It breaks your heart. You get discouraged. This is how God felt. And I'm sure this is how Noah felt. Here Noah is building this ark. He's telling them what's going on. He's obeying the things of God. And they're probably laughing, ridiculing him, and everything else. He being faithful. And I'm sure every, every hammer, every time he hits that nail, it's breaking his heart. And, and knowing Noah, who had compassion, because he knew these people. Some of them was only in laws as well, probably. As his sons had wives, and they had fathers and mothers. And so they had friends, and they grieved him. But you know what? Noah stood alone in the midst of a hostile world. Sometimes we have to stand alone as well. However, he stood on the promises of God. Standing on the promises of God. And sometimes that's all we have to do. Standing on His promises and what He told us. I'll be with you. If everybody else deserts you, I'll be there. When the disciples were there, and everyone deserted them, and they were in the midst of them, came Jesus after His death. And He said, Peace. I'm here with you. When they went out fishing, and they came back, there was Jesus with him, ever present with him. You know, it's better to stand for God than against God. Sometimes you may not think so, but it is. In Hebrews chapter 10, the previous chapter, you know, it says, for we know him that says, it's mine to avenge, I will repay, say the Lord. The Lord will judge his people. And then comes to the awful, awful verse that many don't like it. It is a dreadful thing to fall in the hands of a living God. 
I serve the living God. You have to stand before him. And it'd be a dreadful thing. These people stood before him as well. It's better to stand for God than against God. And then the third thing that enabled Noah to be a father, to be faithful, was trust. Trust the word of God. Listen to it. You obey it. You trust it. Trust the word of God. Notice what it says in here. And holy feet he built our life to save his name. And by faith he condemned the world and became an heir of righteousness that comes by faith. And then over in Genesis chapter 7, notice what happens. It says, the Lord, after he finished building the ark, 120 years now passed. It says, the Lord said to Noah, go into the ark, you and your whole family, because I have found you righteous in this generation. Take with you seven kinds of every clean animal, a male and its mate, and two of every kind of unclean, male and its mate. And also seven kinds of birds, male and female, to keep their various kinds alive throughout the earth. Seven days from now, I will send rain on the earth for 40 days and 40 nights. I will wipe from the face of the earth every living creature. I have made Noah did all that the Lord commanded. In King James, I kind of like what it says in Genesis chapter 7, verse 1. In King James version, it says, Come, thou and all thy house into the ark. It's like an invitation. After Noah built the ark, he waited for God to invite him in. Come, come, you and your family. And indeed, Noah and his family, eight and all, were the only ones invited into the ark. They put their trust in God. Not just Noah, but his sons, his daughters of all. They put their trust in God. They walked into that ark by faith. They trusted in God and His Word, and God, what God said He was going to do, He was going to do. But they also went in there. And they were saved by grace through faith, knowing that going into the ark, this would save them. God told nowhere in His family to come. They were to come into a place of refuge. They were coming into a place of safety from the storm. God guaranteed, come into my place where there is hope, where there is happiness and joy. You know, Jehovah God has a place. There's a place of refuge. There's a place that we can find rest and hope. It's found in Jesus Christ. <coughs> Jesus Christ is the place. We are saved from the coming storm when we place our faith and our trust Jesus. We place our faith in the work that He has done at Calvary. It was by His work that we're saved, not by the work we've done. Noah was not saved because he did the all. Noah was saved because he put his trust in the one true God. He had faith in the true God. We're not saved. I'm not saved because of what I do. I'm saved because of the blood of Jesus. And what I do is the result of what He is doing in me. And also with the result of what He is doing in you. We're saved to show the world that indeed God is alive. And He does speak to death. Jesus Christ is the ark of God. He is the one to whom we come into for safety. We come into for salvation. To where we can be Say, come and I will give you rest. Come into the place. And Revelation, and so it relates to us in Revelation chapter 22. And it says, Come. The Spirit of the bride says, Come. Let him who hear say, Come. Whoever is thirsty, let him come. Whoever wishes, let him come. Let him take what? The free gift. Life. See, God doesn't want you to be lost. He doesn't want you to be destroyed. He wants you to have eternal life. But that eternal life is found only in Jesus Christ. And He says, Come. Come and you can have eternal life. Don't know it. His family, come. 
Come into the ark where there is life. Only God, through Jesus Christ, is there truly life to be found. Do you know of this life? Do you have this life in your heart?
section of the Bible, I guess. We finished up Genesis. Uh, I think right now we're going to look at the first and second Peter, discuss and talk about that. So if you'd like to care, come. Come. If anything, just have a cup of coffee. Listen to what maybe some others have said. I'm not the only one that speaks on Wednesday night. We sit around the table and we just talk about what's in the Word of God and what's there. So we'll be going through first and second Peter. <coughs> we invite you to come and we did that. If not, we invite you to come next week. Sunday school, 9.15, worship service, 10.30. I know next weekend is Memorial Weekend, so for those of you going out of town won't be here, be safe, and have a safe journey and a good time, and be careful as you do travel and as you journey. During the course of the week, look to the Lord, pray to Him for guidance, for leadership, and for help. I do have a list here for again for Father's Day. Thank you for all you ladies and whatever you may want to sign up for or bring. I'll put that back in the four years. You can do that, and that's on June 9th as well. Again, do remember the things that are going on this week. Wednesday here in St. Tammany Parish, a half a day of school for all the students. Um, Thursday night for all the men. We'll be meeting at the Golden Dragon at 6.30. So all would like to come. If we don't see you before that, you have a good week in the Lord and have a pleasant week and we'll see you later on. Have a blessed day. Have a good prayer. Heavenly Father, again, we come before you thanking you for all that you've done for us. Thanking you, Father, especially salvation that you've laid out in front of us. I pray, Father, that your word has touched someone today, and if there is someone that doesn't know you as Lord and Savior, Father, that word will bloom in their hearts. Thank you again that we can come together as brothers and sisters in Christ, and Father, enjoy, enjoy the worship, the fellowship, the singing, the prayer time uh, as brothers and sisters in Christ. Be with us now, Father, and we go out separate ways. Bring us back together again to worship. And I pray that if God has spoken to you today, whether here or you looking at this on Facebook or YouTube, and if you need further counseling or if you would like to talk to someone and you live locally here, you can call at, at the church at 985-214-9343. And feel free to call if you're out of town or if you don't live near here. Seek your local pastor or minister and talk to them further about your own eternal life. We only have today. So if you would like to seek or to talk to someone, feel free to call us and let us know if we can help you in your eternal life, your salvation, your relationship with the Lord as well.